Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. This is your daily money with Janae. And so these are my daily money lives that I try to do Monday through Friday. And it's always around a money tip or a money article that I can give you strategies on, tips on, so that you can use it in your own life. Um, today, we're going to actually deal with a money article that I found in a USA Today paper. And it's all around budgeting for a better, let's see what the title is, trying to budget better in 2020. Here's what sets budgeting all-stars apart from the rest. Now, if you know like me, um, I don't call it a budget. I call it a spending plan. If you know like me, spending plans are very hard to take the time to do and then stick to it is harder. And so that's why I call it a spending plan and not a budget because budgets feel uh, restraining, like they're trying to hold you in handcuffs. And so spend a plan for me, I just say that it's a plan to spend your money. That's it, a plan to spend your money. So it feels a little bit better, but it's about execution. It's about patience. And so I did really like this article. So I wanted to share with you all. Um, whenever I work with my clients, I always tell them, Nothing is going to be perfect on the first time, okay? It's going to take three or four months with your spending plan for you to actually get it down pat in order to be able to benefit from it, okay? So that is one tip I'll give you before I go through these. So like I said, this article is about being a better person at budgeting. I call it spending plan for 2020. So they went through a few tips. And so the first tip was save for the short term. And they were talking about, this is my favorite one. They were talking about how credit card debt is a budget killer. Now, those of you who know me know I don't do credit cards. Uh, focus. Yes, exactly. Those of you who know me know I don't do credit cards at all. Uh, and so this kind of touched on it because they were talking about how people, a lot of times, majority of Americans, the majority of people around the world who have credit cards carry a balance um, month to month. And even if you're not carrying a balance month to month, you're in debt that entire month. Um, so that goes against what I talk about. So, cause I don't want you in debt. Okay. I don't want you in debt. I want you to eventually be able not to be in debt at all in your life, including your mortgage. So, but at least if your mortgage is there, nothing else should be there. And that's what, um, I always talk about. And I always preach. So what the author said in number one on USA Today about that is that it's important to have an emergency fund because a lot of times the reason people use credit cards is because they don't have the money saved for when emergency comes. So if an emergency comes and you have to spend a thousand dollars on a credit card, that that's interest that you're going to have to pay back. You're not paying back a thousand. You obviously are paying back more. So having a emergency fund or what I call it in case you're a breathing fund is so important um, because then you won't have to worry about credit cards because you will have your money in the bank. You are your own bank. Okay. Number two, they said set goals. All right. So making sure that you're setting goals to be able to reach those financial goals. So maybe your financial goal is to have a $10,000 uh, down payment for a new home or your first home this year, then that is a financial goal. And how are you going to reach that? You have to set the goals first and then put the steps into action in order to make it happen. Um, that's what I talk to my clients. All of, all of, we, that's what we do at first. We put their dream, financial dreams down, their dreams, period, because it doesn't always have to be financial. And then we map out the steps according to those dreams to make sure that they reach those goals. So that was number two, setting goals. Uh, the third one was save for the long term. So the end game that you're talking about is retirement. Uh, for, for those of you who work for someone else, there is retirement. Eventually, they are going to want you to retire. Now, for those of us who are entrepreneurs, if we love what we do, uh, like Warren Buffett, he's never going to retire. He co he's going to continue to work until he's in the grave. Then, obviously, we're going to be working you know, until we don't want to work anymore. And a lot of times, if you are doing what you love, you're not going to want to stop working. But even though if you're an entrepreneur, you still need to have retirement savings. You need, still need to be in a position that if you have to stop working, and that's for anybody, that you have money invested that can last you for the rest of your life. And so number three, that tip was talking about saving for the long term. It was all about retirement. Okay, number four was have a system in place of how things are going to run. So we talked about the spending plan. Another thing... Let's make it for us. Exactly. Uh, 
So uh, beneficial base said, yes, because one accident may force us to stop working. That is exactly right. And that is why it's so important also to be able to monetize your knowledge as well. Um, especially like I, I was in pharmaceutical sales, which means that for the 10 years before I started my business nine years ago, which means I needed to know how to drive a car. <laughs> I needed to be able to walk, use my hands, lift up things. So like she, like she's saying here, if I had an accident that caused me to hurt my legs that I couldn't walk anymore or hurt my arms or something, and I couldn't do that. I'm out of that career. I'm out of that field completely. And it was the only thing that I have ever worked in uh, full time as an adult. So that is so right. That's why it's so important to be able to have an emergency fund, to be able to invest uh, just in case you have to retire or you have to live on other means <laughs> going forward. So number four, have a system knowing how you're going to spend your money. So like I said, that comes back to the spending plan. That comes back to also or goes to having a way to see your money. So when we were paying out the $50,000 of debt in the two years, I had an online system where that was attached to my debit card that showed me what we were spending our money in. So the spending plan was on a piece of paper, but it also was inputted into this online system. So when I spent too much in groceries because I didn't have my list, I didn't stick to the plan, <laughs> like they said, having a system, then guess what? That part of the pie chart was red. That was my system. My system was the spending plan and that online program to help me know where I'm spending too much at or where I can take from in order to make up where I went bad at. All right. Number five, they said, say no. I say this on every time I get on the stage, you have to have the power to say no. You have to have the strength to say no to your friends, your family, and yourself. You have to say no. You can have money, but you can say, no, my money is not for you. <laughs> my money is for these bills. My money is for investing. My money is for saving. And you can politely tell people that, whether they're family or friends, you can say to them that, guess what? Yes, I do have money, but I do not have it for you. Now, before I got in the $50,000 of debt, I did let family borrow money. And then when I went through that two years of, uh huh, nope, my back's against the wall, you're not getting anything. Then they asked me so much, you know, they, they got the no so much, like me saying no. Um, sorry, these alarms are coming up. Me saying no during that two years. That after the two years is over and I paid the fifty thousand dollars of debt off, nobody asks me for money anymore. And if they ask me for money today, I'm going to say I have money, but not for you. Or I'm going to give them my book, or I'm just going to give it to them as a gift. It's no borrowing money. All right, it's not borrowing money. But like I said, because I said no so much over those two years I was paying the $50,000 of debt off, nobody asked me for money anymore. And I, you know, and if I know people have been getting their nails done, their hair done, been on trips, been on, you know, on a flight, you don't need no money from me. Okay? You don't need no money from me. You need to think about your choices. <laughs> need to think about your choices so i spent enough time on number five uh so number six is say yes okay so we just talked about saying no but saying yes this is why it's so important to have a spending plan and making sure that within your spending plan i always <laughs> i always tell my clients you have to have a category for fun this is not about being restrictive you know okay of course you're going to have to cut back on some things because we're trying to reach the future. We're trying to reach those financial goals we've been talking about when we're talking about your dreams. But you need to have some fun money there because when you achieve something like you paid off that credit card bill and you've cut up that credit card, where's where in your fun money can you do? Like what can you do with your fun money? Can you go with you and your spouse or you by yourself and go to the spa or go to the movies? Just anything to celebrate that milestone within your finances. That's all, that's all it's about. It's about being able to say yes. And if you, if you put it into your spending plan, saying yes has no guilt to it because the money is there. The money is there for you to spend and to be happy about it. Like It could be as simple as going to get ice cream from McDonald's. 
That is my little guilty pleasure. I love going to McDonald's and I love getting vanilla ice cream with caramel on the top and in the middle. That brings me joy. Okay, that brings me joy. That brings me joy. Yes, the Manola Blonde. But yes, the <laughs> so that is somebody who has definitely heard me speak. Uh, make a list to shop. Make a list to shop. Now, number seven. When I shared this article online, that is my weakness. It's making lists to shop, especially grocery lists. Okay, um, I can even make a list for grocery shopping and still see something and buy like four or five things that's not on the list. So this is something that I am going to get better at when it comes to food shopping. I am only going to try to stick to what is on my grocery list. And if I see something extra that I want, then guess what? I'm going to be disciplined enough to take some things off of the list in order to replace with those other ones so I can stay within the money that I allocated to my grocery for that week or that month. All right, number eight was comparison shop. This is the last one, comparison shop. I always tell people, if you can, do not pay full price for anything. Don't pay full price for clothes. Don't pay full price for entertainment like movies. Don't pay full price for flights and hotels. That's why I have my travel hacking video. Don't pay full price for anything that you cannot pay full price for. Uh, utilities are usually you're going to have to pay full price for. <laughs> They're not going to let you get around with that. But everything else in life that you shop for you can possibly find a discount or you can find a way to save money. And what happens is you can, you're can able to save that money in one area of your spending plan and be able to splurge in another one because you saved it. Or if you have a savings goal of some kind, an emergency fund that you need to save for, a new home that you need to save for, a new, uh, a new car that you need to get back and forth, whatever, then that money that you save on those items when shopping, and I mean shopping, not going crazy, but shopping for things that you need, that money can go to those savings goals so you can get there faster. All right. That's what's so important. And so this article, I really, really like this article. I shared it all over my platforms and I made it a point that I was going to get back to it and share it on a daily money live with Janae because it was just so many great points in here to go further into uh, some tips that be able to help you. Remember that your spending plan does not have to be perfect. Once again, I said at the beginning of this live, it doesn't have to be perfect. It is going to take you a few months to get your spending plan right because there are going to be things that if you started a spending plan in January, you forgot about this once a quarter uh, bill that comes up in March or April. And so now you have to kind of rework it again. Some of you may have um, expenses that only come up once a year. So for me, as a business owner, my website renewals come up once a year. So if I don't plug that in, let's say it's $40, which is, no, $100. It's never going to be $100, all right? <laughs> it's never going to be $100, but I'm going to split that $100 into 12 months, okay? And then guess what? Because I split it up into 12 months, it's already baked in. So when that bill comes that once a year, the money has already been baked in to pay for it. All right. And you're welcome. Um, any questions at all? Any questions at all? And for those of you who do not know, and I'm actually going to drop a video tonight or tomorrow explaining even more, is that I just opened up my 45 minute pick my brain session. All right. My 45 minute pick my brain session. So many people, <laughs> especially on LinkedIn, email me and inbox me about picking my brain. And so now you have an opportunity to pick my brain um, and be able to ask me questions about anything. Okay, anything. And that can be around finances, which you know is killer for me. So <laughs> I love talking about finances, how to become a highly paid speaker, how to get your speaking business started starting a business the right way so you're not one of the statistics that go, go out of business in three years okay but a lot of times those people who go out of business in three years it doesn't matter what the industry is it's a lot has to do with the foundation wasn't built in the first place and they didn't do it the right way and they ended up having to go back to a job okay so i don't want that for you so these pick my brain sessions are available the first link in the bio 45 minutes to ask me anything Okay, anything that you want around 
money, business, speaking, uh, even career. I spent 10 years in corporate America and definitely know how to <laughs> oh, deal with that as well and how to get your leg up um, in your career also, okay? So if there's no questions at all, uh, thank you for joining me for this Daily Money with Janae. I am going to hopefully save this on my phone and put it up on the YouTube channel. That's where all the Daily Money Lives with Janae is at, as long as they say. Uh, if you have any questions about the 45-minute um, Pick My Brain sessions to see if they're right for you or not, just DM me. Just feel free to DM me at any time and that um, I can answer any questions for you as well because I am only taking five people for the Pick My Brain sessions. That's it, five people, that's it. So when I put the video out later on today or tomorrow, I know those five sessions are going to go like this. If I'm putting it on all my social media channels, especially LinkedIn where I get the most requests um, and put it out there, all right? So I hope everybody has a great day and you're welcome as well. Thank y'all for joining me. All right, bye-bye.